What's up guys, this is Steve Randall at night and today what I've got for you is 20 of my favourite life hacks for Android. First up, why not use an old phone or a tablet as a security camera? If you download the app Alfred, you can put your phone and tablet down and use it as a security camera. Not only can you then view the camera on that phone from any other phone or on your laptop, you can also set it as a motion sensor so if someone walks into frame it'll take a photo or a video for you and you can look back at it and see who's been in your room. Lots of people use WhatsApp on the phone but you can also use it on the web. You just need to go to the website in the description, scan the QR code that you see with your phone and then as long as your phone is connected to the internet you can use WhatsApp on the web. Next up a lot of people say if you want to charge your phone faster you should put it into aeroplane mode. This is true but also you may as well just turn it off most of the time if you've got your phone sitting in the corner of the room and you've got it on aeroplane mode you're not going to be using it for anything you're not getting any notifications just go ahead and turn your phone off plug it in and it will charge quicker. Next up, how good would it be if you could control your laptop or your computer with your phone? If you download Chrome Remote Desktop, you can do just this. This will allow you to access your computer whenever you have an internet connection. So you can use it either as a remote, so if you're say sitting in bed, you can use your phone to control a TV that's plugged into a laptop or just to control a computer. But this also means if you're out and about and you can't access your computer and there is something on it that you need, you can remotely access it, you can email stuff to yourself, things like that, and it just gives you a really good bit of flexibility. Next up, if you've got a big phone, say like a Galaxy Note, or anything these days, even a G4, something like this, is pretty large, it's sort of on the fabric kind of side of things, you can use an app called Easy Touch. This will make it much easier to use your phone if it is a bit larger with one hand. Next up, if you want to automatically turn your phone on when you take it out of your pocket, you can use an app called AC Display. This is great if your power button is a little bit janky, or if you just don't like having to turn your phone on and off when you put it into your pocket. AC display will also turn your phone screen on if you get a message and it'll give you details of that message along with say a photo of the person who is trying to contact you. Lots of people use their phones just before they fall asleep, whether you're texting someone or playing a game, using a phone before you go to bed can negatively impact the amount of sleep you get because of the colour of the light coming off the screen. So if you want to remedy this, you can download an app called Twilight. This will cut out all of the blue hues from your phone screen and it should give you a couple of hours better sleep. Next up, if you've lost your phone, make sure you already have Device Manager installed. This means if you do lose your phone or if it's stolen, you can wipe it remotely, you can find out where it was last seen on GPS, and you can also make it sound an alarm if you just want to find it. Next up, if you want to get rid of the bloaty skins that most manufacturers put on their Android phones, you can download something called Nova Launcher. This will allow you to make your phone look very, very close to stock, and it will also give the option to tweak it even further. Next up we have an app called Ampere. Now this will let you check the quality of all of your old USB cables and chargers. We end up having loads, or if you're anything like me, I end up having loads of USB chargers just knocking around, and I can't remember what they're for. If you want to check which of these old USB cables are knackered, you can use Ampere. Next up we've got Alarm You Sleep If You Can, and this will pretty much wake up anybody. There are a few different ways to turn the alarm off, one of which includes tagging an NFC tag, which you can place anywhere around your house, or in your garden, or wherever you want to do it. And there's also a thing where you have to take a photo of a location which you've already set. These mean it's a little bit harder to turn the alarm off in the morning and actually get you out of bed. So if you're a very, very heavy sleeper or you're not really a morning person, Alarmy might be for you. If, like me, you're tired of getting nuisance calls from people reporting to sell you PPI insurance or anything like that, you can use Mr. Number, which will allow you to block numbers and make sure they cannot contact you again. Next up, quite a few phones, including LG phones, have it set so that if you try and use your camera when you're on below 5% battery, it won't let you. This is obviously very irritating if you do want to take a photo and your phone is running out of battery. And an easy way to get around this is to use a third-party camera app. So, for example, Instagram, or something like that will allow you to take a photo even if your phone won't let you. If you're browsing Chrome on your phone and you want to then take all of that and move to your laptop, it's really easy. You can go to Chrome on your laptop, go to settings, then go to history and you'll be able to see all the tabs that are open on all your other Android devices. One thing Google did with Chrome last year was to make it so that all your different tabs appeared as separate applications in your running apps tab. Now this is great for some use cases, but if like me you want to be able to scroll back much more, I think, elegantly and more fluidly within Chrome, you can go into the settings and disable it and you'll have all of your tabs as it used to be in Chrome. Next up is a very common problem. If you're running out of file storage on your phone, so you've got too many pictures, too many musics, too many musics, too much music, too many songs, and that sort of thing, you can use a cleaner app like Avast to get rid of any residual files on your SD card. This means you're deleting stuff which is completely unnecessary and it'll free up some space for you to save more things. Next up, if you're out and about and you need to get internet on your laptop, you can actually use your phone as a portable hotspot. Most phones support this by default now, however if your carrier blocks it or if your phone doesn't support it from the settings, 
There are a bunch of applications in the Play Store and there are also some apps that you can use if you're rooted to get around carrier restrictions and this will allow you to share your internet with your friends, your family, anyone you want. Next up, there are lots of applications, especially games, which will give you spam notifications from time to time. If you still want to be able to use that app or play that game and not have to suffer the notifications, in Android 4.1 and above, you can go into settings and you can simply disable notifications for that specific app. If you're constantly using your phone to communicate and you find yourself sitting in your laptop and constantly checking the screen, you can use something like Push Bullet, which will send all your notifications from your Android phone as pop-ups to your laptop and it will also allow you to then quick reply straight from your desk. Next up is a question I get a lot, which is how to put folders into your application drawer. Now the easiest way to do this is to download Nova Launcher. You can then go into your applications drawer, then grab on an icon, drag it to the edit option, and you can then add it to a collection. And if you want to make a new collection, you can also do that as well. This allows you to have all of your applications in your app drawer, but you can sort them by folders, and you can then drag those folders to your home screen. I hope you enjoyed that guys, let me know in the comments below what your favourite Android life hacks are. Let me also know if there's anything else you'd like to see a video on. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it, please also subscribe if you haven't seen me before. You can follow me on all my social media things, the links in the doobly-doo. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.